I work on human mobility, and recently we've been uh, changing to actually from human mobility to human dynamics in general. And we also have in my lab some, some efforts in, in understanding crime mobility, which I'm probably going to talk at the, end of, uh, at the end of the day. So those are a very quick uh, set of slides just to tell you what kind of data we've been actually using to the purpose of understanding human mobility in general. Right? So I basically, it was nice that people provided some classification on data, so I'm going to provide a different one. So when we're trying to understand how people move, we generally try to find data sets that provides us three dimensions. Right? So the social dimension, so who are you with? Uh, where you are, so basically the special dimension that and what time of the day uh, uh, we actually observe you. So not all data sets have those three dimensions, so there's this effort on trying to combine. So I'm going to go through a few that have been used in the literature, uh, some by us as well. So I can skip this because I'm going to go one by one. Most of the studies out there are done using uh, CDR data, right? So there are, of course, uh, drawbacks on this. The main one being the granularity. Most of the CDR data that has been used to understand the human patterns and how we move has been done on data that is extracted from 3G networks, which actually the, uh, the cell is quite large. This is the intention, uh, the, the, the trend is for this to actually become much better, for instance, when we actually move to 5G because the resolution is going to be much, much, much smaller. Right? So it's hard to get because you have to sometimes have agreements with, uh, with uh, um, service providers. Generally, what a lot of us do, we, we enter some of those competitions from Orange just to get access to the data and then confirm that our theories are okay. Uh, most of the time we, we can confirm, but we can't publish, so it's a little bit of a, um, a mess. So another kind of data set that exists is credit card records. Um, very biased towards people who actually have high income but we can infer location because we know where they purchase things, right? So, and of course, there is the issue of data being bursty. You don't buy things during work time most of the time, so I don't know where you are. Next one is the use of social media. Um, there are many data sets out there, particularly from old sites like Orkut that people actually scrape, and they can actually do some natural language processing to actually find out if you're mentioning a location uh, where you are. The better ones are actually what we call location-based social networks, and those are the ones that people check in, and several of those data sets are actually available for you to, uh, to use. For instance, Guala is one that you can use, um, and then we can, again, do studies on, on, on mobility that way. This is a new one that is actually starting to emerge. I've never seen it. Uh, I have a colleague who will use it, and it's that your mobile phone has basically um, a record of all the apps is basically what we're saying here is, is some sort of system log of your mobile phone that are people now trying to share. And this basically means that sometimes you hear opening, let's say, Instagram, but when you go out there, you tweet. So we're trying to integrate this using the system logs, and this is now being called mobile flow records. Uh, sensors and surveys, quite good, depending on where you get this data from. For instance, we have access to a data from, from Colombia which was done, was collected quite, quite nicely, uh, but some of them are not so nice, so if you're trying to understand patterns, uh, you have to be careful because sometimes they are collected by government efforts and the governments have a hidden agenda on what they are trying to demonstrate. For instance, they're trying to say, well, uh, we don't have an issue on traffic, for instance, and then they collect uh, a biased sample. But this could be quite useful because it also includes something that is becoming a trend in understanding human mobility, which is using contextual information. Right. All the studies have been done using averages, so basically I try to understand where a person is or where he is, but I don't know where he is at a particular time, and I don't know the age group, I don't know um, agenda, and so on. And those uh, kind of surveys, they collect that information. We, there is also a trend in my lab, we're trying to, to, to do some work on this, on understanding how the general regularities that we found in urban environments, how this extrapolate when we actually bring people in restricted environments, right? So we know that we have tendencies, for instance, we publish a paper showing that we have tendencies to go back to locations that we've been recently. We're trying to find, if I study how people move in this building, do you also have that tendency to go to locations that you've been recently? And this we can actually extract from Wi-Fi data, assuming that you get a permission to do that. This I'm going to skip. All the research has been done using banknotes. If you're trying to understand patterns using that, don't. Uh, this because this is basically an aggregation of a mobility, right? So it's basically there was a website that you could register the banknote that you had. It's called I think it's called Where is George? But the problem is that 
the, the nodes change hands, so you're not really, really tracking anybody, you're tracking a, an aggregation of every, everybody moving, right? So, but it was nice in the beginning. And, mo and finally, there's this GPS trackers, which most of the bike shares, taxis, uh, Uber drivers that they have. If you try to deploy one, we actually just wrote a proposal to EPSRC trying to deploy one in Africa, and it's quite expensive, right? So we're trying to basically understand human uh, patterns uh, in, in Tanzania. Uh, this is, uh, I'll share this later, so this is just so that you understand uh, what you get generally, right? So some of those will have spatial and temporal information, some you have social spatial and temporal information, some you have only social and temporal, and there are some that you have contextual data, right, which you could use for. My, my take home messages on this five minutes, which I probably took longer than five, uh, is basically just this bold one here, right? I've been advocating since I moved from the United States in, in, in I mean, I was in the United States for 18 years, was advocating this there, came to the UK, August last year, and I really think that we are missing the point that we should not be collecting more data, we should be collecting actually quality data, right? At this point, there are a lot of quality data on the hands of company like, companies like Google, Facebook, and we really don't know what is possible, and we need to understand what's possible because we do not have data with that quality. So we should have efforts such as, uh, in medicine, we had the Frenningham study, which was collecting data from people for several decades, they're still collecting it, and we need to have something that we can use in mobility as well. Right. So anyway, it's my, my five minutes. Thank you. <laughs>